Hi guys, happy Sunday. With one silver for cycling, that's cool. Uh, I am basically, I am an email conversion strategist. Uh, what I do is, I help uh, e-commerce business to turn one-time buyers into repeat customers through the use of uh, email marketing. So that's as, you know, as simple as I can come up with in terms of uh, explanation. So um, I've been using email throughout my career. I've been, my career has spent about 30 plus years. I've been in the newsprint, uh, newspaper business. Uh, I started a web design firm. And then I was the head of sales for a cybersecurity company. But throughout all this engagement, email has been something that is that stuck with me for cold emailing, for maintaining contact with customers and all those things. So when I decided to do something on my own, uh, November last year, I said, okay, let's, let's do email. You know, on the surface, uh, Ben is correct in the sense that people tend to take email for granted because as it is in work or, or business, you normally get emails and through and fro. And it becomes like, it's uh, what you call that, you take it for granted, you know, that it's there. But when, uh, as I go deeper into it, especially when I want to teach and coach on email marketing, for example, there are a lot of nuances involved in email marketing that you don't see behind the scenes. And um, there are definitely a lot of uh, a lot of advantages of using email. And throughout this uh, what, 45 minutes, one hour session, uh, hopefully I can just uh, open up your eyes to the possibility of emails. Not because I do it, but I think it's necessary for a lot of other people are doing it already. So if you're not, then you could be missing out on something big. Mm, all right. Uh, very good intro. intro. Um, can you hear my sound now? Is it better? Awesome. This is better. Okay. Yeah, this is better. Yes. Yeah, I think um, somehow my my webcam stole the audio settings. So I'm actually talking to the webcam. Right, right. <laughs> happens. It happens all the time. <laughs> Okay, guys. Uh, yeah. If you're ready to 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 uh, let's learn more about email marketing. All right. Uh, type email in the comments and let us know. Uh, uh, that that you're interested to know more. Right. Type email in the comments. Uh, let us know which one of you are re is ready. All right. Oh yes, Mohana. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, right. So let's let's hit on uh for a few questions that I have prepared. And I this at the same point, I'm also very curious. All right. So for actually one of the questions is like very obvious. I think most of everyone wants to know, like, uh, is email marketing still valid? Like, like, like I, I'm sure people use it often as newsletter and stuff like that. But I think majority of us also can can know that yeah, we receive a lot of spam mails. Um, we also just see see and then delete. So yeah, what's your point on this? Uh, definitely it's still valid. I mean, although it is as a medium, it's 51 years old this year. Oh, uh, what? what? 51. <laughs> email, okay. if, you, if, you, if you study the history of internet, uh, email was one of the founding layers of the internet. The coding and everything, uh, you know, besides the communication part, email was the first thing that they actually used to do. So if you, oh. if you, you know, if you peel out the layers and uh, email is considered a founding father of uh, the internet infrastructure. That's that's how far they go. And uh, if you look at social media, I think social media is about half its age in general, about 20, 25 years old. And it's still going strong. You're looking at, you know, 4 billion as of 2020 uh, email users. Uh, there is on average about 306 billion emails sent every day. Wow. Yeah. 4 billion Oh, four four email billion accounts. email four accounts. Billion email accounts. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. All That's right. Lot. I mean, you know, if anybody would question you and say, hey, email, what's so great about it? Let me ask you one thing. When you sign up for any social media, for that matter, anything that's online, what do they ask you for first before they, you sign up? They ask for our email. Lor. There you go. So if you say email is smaller than uh, social media, Every mm -hmm. single social media account, okay, maybe you use the same email account, but every social media account has one email address. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. Facebook is one of the largest sender of emails in the world. Oh, yeah. Ka. Yeah. Mm, oh, I, I think I, I disconnected the, the Facebook's uh, email newsletter, so I'm not sure if they're still sending out. Uh, Whenever you, you, for example, uh, if you reset your password mm -hmm. or any uh, activities, uh, 
or when Facebook has a major announcement, for example. So if you are in the business community for Facebook, for example, your ad advertisers and all those things, they still reach you out by email. You don't see Facebook correct, reach correct. you out from Messenger. Uh, correct, correct. So, but but this leads to like, uh, it means that they are just doing a transactional email, not, not so much of like, uh, hey, buy our new stuff. Like no, it's both trans transactional and also informational. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. So mm. if, if, for example, you're going to take a Facebook blueprint or, you know, when uh, if you are part of a Facebook agency group, they will let you know whenever there's a seminar coming up and all those things. You know. mm. so, so it's and, one of the best ways to, to, to tell people that there is something happening. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, and it, you know, a lot of people say if I sell to companies, does email work? Um, one thing that I've learned so far, I've realized, uh, and it, I think some of the coaches have so spoken about it. You know, uh, in business, it's all about human to human marketing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, correct. Because correct. if I want to reach the procurement uh, division or HR, for example, if I'm selling coaching or whatever. I'm still talking to one person on the other who's making a decision or the other person, the person who's going to make the recommendation. And the only medium so far that is not considered intrusive, okay, spam aside, you know, is still email. I can't, for example, like Ben, I just met you and I start uh, communicating with you through SMS or Messenger. It's going to freak you out. <laughs> yeah. All right? But if I were to send you an email, uh, and if I want to talk about, you know, what I do and I want to share some of the new stuff, for example, educational, not to say, Ben, you buy this, buy this, buy this, yes, that's bad, right? But if I want to introduce you subtly to me, to my world, I would put you into my email subscription list, for example, and mm -hmm. I share my, you know, daily tips. I share about what I do. I share about wins and successes, for example. And all of a sudden, before you know it, and... Um, you know, if you read my emails, and even if you don't read my emails, at the end of the day, when you scroll through your list, you will see Andrew almost like every day. In the email? In your email list. Oh, oh wow. Right? Okay. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's the power of, uh, um, because it's, it's a direct one-to-one -one communication, but done at scale. As far as, I'm, as far as you're concerned, you're receiving an email from me directly. I could mm. be sending to a thousand or a million Benjamins around the world. But mm, my I email see. is written such a way that as if I'm really talking to you. And that's one of the tricks of writing emails. You write for one person. Uh, it's like a personal, it's like a personal letter um, to each and every one of oh, yes. your followers or fans. Lah. Oh, yes. Yeah. But which, which brings me to the next question is like, uh, how often should we, because you say every day, what, mm. but if we receive an email every day, would it be like uh, annoying, spam, things like that? Okay. Um, I'm considered the extreme. I'm running experiments now. I send email every day to my subscriber list. Um, but if you're in business, you could start with once a week. Now, the criteria is this. The criteria is how often do you, for example, you do business, how often do you have new announcements? How often, if you're in e -com, how often do you run promotions? Okay. And, uh, and then you use that as the basis for you to send. At the minimum, at least once a week. Because uh, the world has moved to, there's so many distractions. And I think the, the thing is, you only have like three seconds to hook somebody in. Right? So if you are not in front, in the line of sight of your, I call it in the line of sight of your prospects or your customer, he will forget you. So... Mm. If you say, okay, I don't know where to start, I'll recommend that you start once a week. Now, what will motivate you is this. The moment you start sending emails and you get some sales, then I ask you back how many times do you think you want to send your emails? Mm -hmm. All right? So, so that's, the, that's if they, because there's never a right or wrong, but basically start once a week, you're more comfortable, you do three times a week. Especially mm -hmm. e-commerce, right? Uh, if I do info products like what I do, I send every day. And mm -hmm. it's not selling emails. It's, it's uh, basically sharing ideas and, and basically some experiments, the results that show sometimes I fail, sometimes I succeed. But the good thing is this. Because I send emails to you every day, you have two choices. Either you 
don't read my three choice actually you don't read my email or you unsubscribe me or you read my emails now because i'm in your in your in your email box almost every day consistently when i start running a promotion or campaign right and normally when you're a promotion campaign i would recommend you do maybe at seven days or three days uh, continuous email all right if you notice the recent eight eight for example all of a sudden you'll be receiving emails from shopee and lazada yeah yeah okay. in most cases they don't once in a while they do it but if because i send you every week every day it becomes natural for for you to receive my emails so it's that part and parcel of also training uh your subscribers or your readers to accept oh. Right. Oh yeah, I think I I um like I for example hundred X uh we do send emails so people who are who are subscribed to hundred X, um do receive a lot of emails. Uh, mm -hmm. I noticed that at the beginning when we mm -hmm. started to send emails, uh the the open rate was very low, uh but eventually after we continue sending emails and sending more and more because we have a lot of like a uh, uh, workshops and challenges and yeah. and and events that we are, we are we are running, mm -hmm. uh eventually the the open rate like it went from like three percent up to like 10 20 percent so i'm like hmm? oh so this is what you mean by training so i felt like hmm? wow people started like, like not sure why what was the reason why at the beginning they right. don't open they ignore but then later yeah. on they slowly slowly more and more people open yeah because they're familiar with you the moment all you need is to catch them uh on your first email you know so your your welcome series email is very important you lay down the ground rules basically what you do and all those things and also tell them how often you're going to set okay set expectations right but oh. subsequently along the way is all about how you deliver value i mean irrespective of any platform especially now whether you do social or whatever it is you've got to start with giving value first before you do your ask mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. your email should be on that basis you know and it's not just i mean nobody survives on charity okay everybody knows that but you can also do your selling, okay? I call it the SPO methodology. For example, basically I, I do a story, I do a point and I do a call to action. And the call to action is related to something I want you to do. Either watch my video, uh, look at my landing page, for example, buy my stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when the reader, reader receives something like this, they learn something. Now they can decide whether they want to proceed further or not. And that's where the CTA comes in. Mm. so it no longer becomes a very salesy email but of course like you you cannot try and sell everything in in every email then then that, that will really really increase your unsubscribe <laughs> when i do when i do uh when i do a campaign when i send my seven uh, seven days campaign for example yes i'll be selling but i'll be using different angles oh the key mm. thing is this Let's say, for example, you're, you're going to do a course on 100x on, let's say, financial planning. I, I love your intro. It's so, it's so cool. <laughs> and, and when you want to sell financial planning, you can either be a straightforward one and say, hey, this is what I have. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what you can do for you. And this is where you can get it. So that's a straightforward one. Uh, but then you can also look at financial planning from whatever it expects. What are the pain points? So you pick maybe out of five pain points, you do one pain point per email address oh. a pain point where you can learn and by the way if you if you're interested uh, i have this for you so it, it doesn't become very very uh, very obvious it's like by the way i talk to you now eh, but by the way uh, i think for this uh, what do you think uh? that's all <laughs> so i'm not uh, i'm not selling you i'm actually inviting you mm, to take part mm, if you don't like it's, it's, fine. it's not hard sell it's, it's more like so being coincidence yeah got such thing something like that correct correct uh, because uh we are so hardwired i mean we all have our bs meter the moment yeah, yeah. we know, we know really up or the guy yeah. will send me something but what if you what if you lead with value first and by the way if you'd like to join by all means if you don't like that's fine uh okay understand yeah. um there's a question here from jasper uh what's the recommendation for user-friendly email marketing tool oh okay uh there okay there are two distinctions one is your inbox providers, which is what every one of us use, either your Gmail, your Yahoo Mail, your Hotmail, your, your Outlook, for example. So you, you basically receive email and you can use it to send email or reply to email. Okay, so that's one inbox provider. The second one is what we call the email service provider. And this one are basically your MailChimp, your active campaigns. Those are the, uh, Jasper, those are the, the tools that you use. 
And primary why they exist is because they allow you to basically send your email at scale. You know, you have 1,000 subscribers, you write your campaign and you send to everyone, or you send to a segmented list, for example. And they would tell you basically how many people open your email, how many people click on your email, you know, how many people have not been active on your email over a period of time. So the ESP is like what I call a CRM of sales. It is your CRM mm-hmm. for your email marketing. Mm-hmm. So uh, user-friendly marketing tools, now most of them, I mean, all of them, all this while has been uh, cloud-based. Uh, you pick any one of them. The, the trick is this. You look for, you can start off a uh, chip, which is basically free. Most of them has about 1,000, uh, 1,005 uh, email address. They offer it for you for free. Mm-hmm. And you can start off on that basis and test. You mean uh, 1,000 subscribers, is it? 1,000 subscribers up to uh, 1,005. Oh, it's free. okay. okay. You, know. you uh, know why they do that? To hook you in so they use the service? Yes. It's the same <laughs> method for your, your hosting services and all these. They sell you cheap. And eventually, have, let's say 1,000 people and they're so comfortable with receiving email for you. Now you want to switch. Uh, although it's easy to switch, but you have your domain reputation to worry about. You have your sending reputation, for example. Then most likely you just continue like you pay another 10 bucks a month or whatever and you continue and you exp- and as you go deeper and deeper, before you know you have hundred subscribers or hundred thousand subscribers, you may not want to change unless they really, really fail in their delivery of service. Mm, um I, I think that there are people who, who are using like literally just using Gmail to send mass emails out. Uh yes, I've seen that. that- yeah, BCC, so, they do the BCC model. Uh, BCC model. So yes. is it good? Is it bad? Can, can they do it? Okay, Gmail allows you to send, I think if not mistaken, about what, 200 emails uh, an hour or something. There's certain limitation to it, number one. Uh-huh. Unless you use your Gmail workspace, which is the branded Gmail, for example, like Benjamin at 100x.com, for example. Uh-huh. Uh, certain people, you just use Gmail. It is not good for your reputation as in business reputation because one, it shows... I don't even know whether you're, you're, you're in a business or you're serious or not, or you're a spammer. Number two is, if you send maybe 10, 20 emails, you're okay. Lah. But if you send any about 50 and above, you won't know whether the person actually interacted with your email unless they reply. Uh, so tracking. That's, that's you can't more, track. More tracking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but, then the ESPs oh. allow you to even track up to, you know, to your GA so that you, when you send campaigns, you know that which campaign or which email of the, of the series actually work generated sales, for example, or uh, uh, mm, I see. So it's free, you know, go for it. Lah. Don't, so don't... it really doesn't matter, uh, ignoring Gmail, uh, yeah. any of the services, so it doesn't really matter which one is is, is good or bad, lah, or, or whether there's no like specific, uh, like this is the best email because because they, they have the highest, hmm. uh, what do you call this? Um, what, what's, what, what's that word already? Delivery rate. And, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Most of them now in business, the, the big boys you pick anyone, you can't go wrong with it. It's, it's oh. whether you're familiar or you're comfortable with the functions. And, you know. Oh. Yeah. For, oh. So if, if you say you want to start, uh, just pick any one of them. Do a, do a Google search for top five ESP or email service providers. You pick one of them. As long as they offer you about 1,005, 1,000 to 1,005 free email accounts for free for life, mm-hmm. uh, you can start off with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then in the you end, it's just how how is in the end is the difference between how much is it and if you like the interface or not things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Good. Okay. Because, because if you don't start, if you don't start, you won't you won't go into. There are a lot of uh, as you go deeper. There are a lot of uh, so called features that you use. For example, yeah. you do A/B tests. You want to do, uh, you know, reset emails before you, uh, if, if they don't open, for example, you do some automation and all that stuff, right? But because you don't start, you don't know what you need. So if you go ahead and let's say subscribe or pay one, then you realize as you go deeper into your business, hey, this one does not serve my purpose mm-hmm. or this one doesn't meet my requirements. So that's why I would encourage you to pick one, start first, build up the momentum and then test against how the audience react to what you do. Then later you want to go some deeper, hey, let's do some automation stuff. You know, let's do some uh, conditional, uh, basically emails and all those stuff that you can build a lot of things inside. So that's possible. Mm, I see, yeah. I see. Okay, understand. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, Jasper says thanks. Welcome, man.
Okay. Uh, yeah, because I, I don't, I was also very curious because um, usually we, we get a lot of comments like, oh, don't use this service because their delivery rate is very low. Oh, don't use this service because uh, like you mark as spam and things like that. Hmm. Hmm. That is okay. the authentication part. That is the authentication uh, part. Uh, in, in the service that I work with clients, I call, I, I have this so-called ABC model or ABC framework. You know, the A stands for authentication. Basically, if you have a domain, let's say 100x, I will basically work with you to make sure that your domain sender reputation is good. So that means mm -hmm. one, to avoid landing into spam. So you fix that first. Then you look at the blueprint part, all right? The B stands for the blueprint. Basically, how you want to send your email, what templates do you want to use? How do you operationalize uh, all this email sending and all that stuff? And when you finish with that, then you look at the C, which is basically the convert and also the content. Mm -hmm. How are you going to write your emails? How are you going to segment your emails? Uh, what sort of like, what sort of so-called tone that you use that represent you when you send your email? Ah, uh, okay. It's like a brand, the brand image, brand, the brand image, and all those things. The brand know? language, yeah. So okay. the authentication part is something that that one is technical part. There's in email marketing, there's the art and also the science part or the mechanical part. The uh -huh. art part is how you write your email, how you if you do ecom, how you create your 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 email with graphics and all those things that looks cool mm -hmm. but the mechanical is stuff like authentication you know your spf your dkim and your dmark for example to make sure that when gmail receives an email from you they know that it is actually coming from you and not a hacker present, pretending to be you or they will also check your track record with your emails that you sent mm -hmm. right i guess so, this this so it like uh so I'm, I'm guessing for, let's say for certain new emails, you create a, a new email mm. and then there is no history behind the email. Yes. So does, does Google, because there's no, there's no history, there, there's no like people opening or, or deleting or marking it as spam. Um, does, face, uh, does, does Gmail or rather does any email track it as like a, this, this, this is a new email. So therefore it's spam or therefore it's what? Because when you create the email, suddenly you send to 100 people, 200 people. Yes. Correct. That's, that's, uh, you know, in, in physical world, like this, you want to enter a building, they will ask you for an IC identification and all of things. Uh -huh. right? But if you come in and you don't have that, then what do you do? They probably won't let you in. So yeah. technically speaking, if Gmail looks at your Gmail and looks at your email, you know, your domain sender has some issues or your IP address has some issues, you know, and, uh, they will dump you into spam first because their interest is this Gmail or Yahoo Mail's interest is to protect their customers, which is basically you and me who are subscribers to Gmail. Correct, correct. Imagine if every day there's no filtering, there's no spam filtering, and every day I receive spam on my, on my emails. You know what? I'm going to move from Gmail to somewhere else. Mm, mm, right? mm, correct, so their correct. priority is to make sure that they filter all this so-called nonsense email away from you and allow you to decide whether this is important or this is nice to have promotion type of email. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's the, that's the, the other part that a lot of people tend to, to forget, which is how to maintain your sender reputation. So there is always this warm up sequence. So let's say if somebody like, you know, want to start uh, email marketing, they have not done it. So we will basically work with you to basically, uh, warm up your sequence sense to a few people that you know, because Gmail looks at few things. They look at engagement, same thing like social media. If you look at it, the whole marketing is, engagement which is do they open your email do they click on your email do they reply on your email or do they forward your email all these yeah. are indicators to say that your email is valuable to the reader uh there's engagement in the email lah. yes uh, so if you have this then you start building up with people a small circle that is responding to it and then over time then you slowly grow your sending so if for sudden uh, I've got a new email, why well, I can who I want to send one thousand email, I guarantee you at least sixty seventy percent of your emails will end up spam. Not because you're sending <laughs> spam, but because uh -huh. Gmail or uh, what don't know you, and especially mm -hmm. Outlook. Outlook is extremely, extremely. It's even tougher than Gmail. Oh, in oh. filtering, if you have if you have your images size or images uh, too many images to email, it will end in spam. And this is this is this is this is very very important for Outlook. Mm, okay. Yeah. So or oh, means that if oh okay, okay. Um 
So as a new email, your your suggestion is to just warm warm up, send to friends and and, and things like that. There's no settings yes. to 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 click on. Okay, this hundred percent is going to end up in your inbox already. There's no, no such thing. Uh. <laughs> you 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 just have to basically uh uh what's what do you call that? You you just have to talk, till the soil to basically make sure that your audience actually like your emails. And ah. respond to your email. That's why you notice some of the new ones or some emails they will ask you to reply for the first email. Or they ask you for double opt-ins. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. Like that. Double uh, opt-ins is also a signal. Uh, it's a signal to the Gmail. It's a signal to you that this person did not simply put in a random email. And the person has also given you the double confirmation that they want to receive emails from you. Oh, okay. Right? okay. Because I can simply, if I want to join, let's say your your group, I simply put Andrew plus whatever it is. Yeah. And I know I won't be reading an email, but because I just want to get a link magnet or the download stuff in it. But if I don't put in a proper email, obviously I won't check that email. Yeah. And because right. I don't double opt in, you won't be sending anything. So you know that you don't have too many uh, junk subscribers into your into your list anyways, because you know uh, it adds up in terms of cost, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm, correct, right? Yeah. Because most uh, email service they charge based on subscribers, but so if there's a lot of mm-hmm. like useless or rather fake yeah. emails, then you you charge. Correct. Right. But then okay. it's like the more damaging stuff is this. Assuming let's say you have hundred emails subscribers on your list, and fifty of them simply whack some email address. Uh, yeah. And what you do is you you gung ho, you go and send your emails regularly, because fifty percent did not open their emails. It will affect your sender reputation too. Mm. Oh. But okay, but but isn't yeah. usually email open rate is like twenty to thirty percent? So you... twenty twenty to twenty five percent is the general, uh, so called uh, general benchmark. Uh, uh. But I've seen people certain emails. Uh, I've seen people hitting about sixty seventy. Oh wow, those are hyper engaged. That means your content has been so good that people actually look forward to um, to receiving your emails. Mm. Okay. Okay. Be- so before we head to that question, yeah. um, seems like there is another question here. Uh, that Jasper is asking. Hmm. Uh, what tracking tools can be used to track call to action from email? Each of the email service providers already have tracking tools uh, enabled. They call it the pixels. Mm-hmm. So so and. Uh, and it is also they will provide you a feature where you can integrate it to your GA. That means your UTM UTM tools is inside available in your ESPs. Mm-hmm. And within yeah. each email, they will have a pixel. That's why they can tell you the open rates and also the click through rates. Uh yeah. So for those who don't know what is UTM, is some kind of code at the end of the link that tracks like whoever clicks what and where and and when. Yes. So it's, these are, these are usually what what email services. I think most all email services would have this kind of tracking uh, included together, like yes. correct? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So yeah, if you guys are learning something, okay, let us know in the comments. Uh, just type value in the comments if you are learning something new today, uh, from Andrew. Okay. Then uh, and don't don't worry about uh, like uh, uh, not sure you want to ask questions or not because you you were sound like not smart. Uh, don't worry, I'm here also asking questions. These are literally my questions that I'm asking him. Um, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't really matter. Just ask whatever questions that that you have in mind that may help you uh, get more sales in your business and, and and even to how you want to send email to increase your your customers' loyalty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, just now you you uh. You were talk- so we were talking about like okay so we don't want to end the email in promotions don't want to end it in spam but what if you are already in promotion uh mm. in spam H- how how do that get out of it okay uh getting in spam will be very tough getting in spam will be very tough because getting in spam is very tough <laughs> no the, the moment you're in spam getting uh-huh. out of it is very tough oh okay 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 uh so that's why i always my recommendation is to start off right that means you first you warm up your email, you make sure the domain sender reputation is done. Everything is done first before you start sending a few emails and then you ramp up accordingly. That will reduce the chances of landing in spam. Okay. Uh, and there are tools out there for you to check also. For example, like there's this free tool called mailtester.com. So what it does is it gives you a, a URL. Every time you log in, it gives you a, a URL which you can use it to send your email. And it will tell you 
basically what's the chances of your email ending in spam what what of the service providers will, will, will basically classify your spam for example and all those things so you can actually use that to test before you send your newsletter or your campaign the the that aside between promotions and uh, primary tab especially if you're referring to gmail yeah now in promotions by default if your uh, if your email has a ratio of let's say 60 40 60 being more images than text it's almost close to 99.9 percent .9 it will end up with promotion <laughs> oh okay okay so um when i when i do emails for let's say info products it's purely text only in e-commerce no choice because e-commerce you need to have pictures you have your hero products and all those things yeah so that's why sell products. correct yeah right so but if you do info products or if you just basically um, you know, I mean, if I were to send a business email to Ben, I'm not going to put a lot of images. It's going to be text. To it's like any emails that I send to any friends or, or my bosses mm -hmm. or businesses. So yep, yep. Gmail will look at that. Okay. Number two is this. If you want to, in, if you're in comments and say, hey, how long I want, I, this, is, this is the email that I sent. Then what you do is your first few emails, or especially your welcome emails, you get them to drag the emails into their primary tab oh okay right so that's why you notice sometimes your thank you thank you page when you subscribe for a subscription or whatever they still tell you step one drag your my our emails into the primary tab so that is an indication to gmail and say hey, this email is important for me i want it to appear in that that's number one number two you can actually get them to reply to your email so that's an engagement already ah uh, okay so certain certain users will say you know if you like this uh, before I send you the next thing, can you just reply yes or whatever it is? Or they ask you some smart question which you have to reply. And when you have this interaction going on, it becomes like a normal email. So Gmail would then have so-called a rating and say this should go into your primary uh, tab. Yeah, I, I've seen newsletters where I signed up before and I like it's very obvious that they're not going to reply your message, but they, they just they they always end uh, sometimes they will end up with uh, uh yeah, uh, tell me what do you think about this email uh, that I've just sent you. Do you do you learn anything or do you have any problems? Like, just let us know. Just reply this message with a certain word, a keyword, something like that. that right. mm, okay. Uh, but I know you're not going to reply me. So why are you asking me to reply you? Mm. The, the, the rule that is not to be broken as if you're sending emails is this. You must reply to your email. Uh, as a sender, we have to reply? to, to As the... a sender, yes, you should. Oh, okay. Remember, email is not an it is technically not a numbers game. It's a it, it is about it's not about the number of subscribers. Mm -hmm. It's about the relationship you have with your subscribers. That's the value. So if you have let's say a million use a million subscribers, mm -hmm. but these people either open your email, don't open your email, don't react to your email. It's mm -hmm. useless. But if I have like a hundred or maybe a five hundred subscribers, but these are heavily engaged because there's an interaction between the sender and the receive uh, and the readers, right? that's the value that's where the value is so if you're a sender by all means set your email such a way that you allow people to reply and you actually reply back to them oh in order mm. to get respect you know in order to demand respect you have to give respect understood yeah sounds this one sounds more friendly than because sometimes we, we receive emails that that says do not reply to this email because yeah. someone is checking this email then, then give me a reason why i should open your email <laughs> okay understand right. yeah. okay uh there's a question for alfred uh emailing correct target audience versus not exactly the right target audience uh, mm. i think it's something like uh so you have you have one whole list we have ten thousand of 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 uh subscribers for example and yes. then we have a promotion so do we spend to everybody in the list or mm. like people who, who actually like that specific stuff which is better right. because um, I think I understand the, the 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 concept behind his question because it's like if you can send to ten thousand people, you might get that extra few more sales hmm. compared to you just send to that one thousand people who's just going to give you that one two sales. Correct. So that is basically what you call segmenting already, and it's one of the more important aspects of email marketing, a critical one in fact, because you want to send the email to the right people at the right place at the right time. So when you do a broadcast email, that means I blast to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like you correctly mentioned, the, 
certain users, they, because they're different stages of their life, different stages of buying cycle. So when you blast them like this, very likely that they will either go through, which means they won't open your email or they mm-hmm. unsubscribe, or you really offend them, they report you spam, you know. But generally, <laughs> okay. but when I, let's say for example, uh, I, I run a, a so-called a cooking, uh, I, I send a cooking newsletters, for example. Mm-hmm. And obviously I have people who are vegetarian, uh, yep. people who are non-vegetarian. And now I simply buy something on how to cook stick. Although it's the best, best uh, so-called the best recipe, whatever it is I send to everybody. Mm-hmm. The people who are vegan is going to get offended. Mm, okay. Right. But by virtue of me segmenting, now I know in my group, okay, so that's a tactic to do it, which I'll come to it. There's a group that is interested only in meat. There's a group that's interested in vegan, for example. And if I have a promotion or if I'm sending a, a content, not even promotion, just a content mm-hmm. on, on, you know, on, on stick or cooking stick, I will just segment to these people because then I'm sending emails that's relevant to them. So why people will, will, will you know, unsubscribe is because I'm receiving email that's not relevant to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so that's how you, you segment. And how you do that is the few things is one, in your welcome series, you can either do a poll in your email in one of the emails and say, you know, can you tell me what's, you know, click which of the subject matter where you are in your stage so that when you click, I will know that I should put you into different buckets. Okay. So for example, if we go back to the cooking uh, example, if I say, you know, are you, do you, do you like meat or are you a vegan, for example, let's so say A and B, right? Or you are open, let's say three questions or three, three polls. Then if I click on vegan, automatically I'll classify you into the vegan bucket. So now I know when I've got something that's related to vegan and it's interesting, uh, and I'm going to send to this group only, right? The, the other trick is you track them by links. Let's say, for example, now let's say you do 100x. Now you've got, you've got seven pillars, right? Sales and marketing, you've got finance, you've got health and fitness and all those things, right? Yeah. And uh, initially, maybe you don't know. So you're going to do a, a, a test run of maybe seven days or, or one week or whatever it is and say, now today I'm going to talk about sales and marketing. And there's a video link to it, okay? And then uh, let's say Monday you do sales and marketing. Tuesday you're going to do health and fitness, for example. And then Wednesday you do finance. Yep. And each one has a video link. So what you do now is you then basically send emails with this link and you track this link and say people who click on sales and marketing goes into a sales and marketing bucket. Mm-hmm. And people who say click on health and fitness, for example, go into that. Some of them click all. Oh, that's fine. So you go have a general one as well. So essentially, you're tagging these users based on their interaction with the link. Oh, now I see. you know okay. you will form a picture over a period of time of exactly what are the areas that they're interested in. So if you say that every week, uh, over a period of one month, what well, this guy, uh, every health and fitness video or the follow also click one, uh, then you know already that you're gonna sell. If you want to sell something or you're gonna promote something on health and fitness, or you've got a very important uh, webinar or free one, you would target this group of people first because they have given you an indication of interest by clicking mm. on that particular link. Mm. So we can actually detect how many times they open uh, what they call this health and fitness emails somehow. Yeah, that's why because... the ESP is important. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I have to figure out how that work in the system because usually you can only tag them with one specific word and mm. if there's like seven emails then mm. there's seven different words already lah, something like that you, you <laughs> tag them by links lah. basically it's possible most esp would be allow you to do that ah uh, okay awesome yeah. all right um i think uh this one will relate to, to a, a, another similar question which is like a, let's say for example you keep on sending to the wrong target mm. okay and then your open rate becomes low what happens yeah. to your email uh, credibility and things like that. Does it affect much if it's like just a five percent every time five percent open, five percent or five or three percent open? Like that? Uh, if it's if it's over long term, it will. Over long term, it will. Uh, but the thing is, if you send emails to people who don't open, uh, you only you you then want to encourage. For example, let's say now you send to a group and it's constantly very very low. 
you can always try an email to them and say, you know, uh, and remember, it's one to one communication, it's human to human. So you can write, in, you know, hello, you know, for example, I say to Alfred, you know, say, hi, Alfred. And uh, I've noticed you have not opened most of my emails. You know, it's, it's uh, could you tell me, you know, um, what are the things that you may want to know more or how can I help? So that's why they reply in email. So people, when people know that if I reply to this person, this person will reply back. I will openly also give you a feedback, right? Oh. Number one. Number two, you want to get super aggressive. You can also tell them that you know, if you don't find this uh, no longer relevant to your life, I mean, it's not your problem, it's not my problem. It's mm -hmm. just that we are on a different path. Um, I will encourage you to unsubscribe. Mm. With email marketing, you only fear them reporting you as spam. You should not fear them for unsubscribe, primarily because if I on one track of, of sending emails on a particular topic and it's not relevant to you, there's no reason for you to stay on my email list anyways. Mm, correct, correct. Right? And uh, so you can invite them to unsubscribe. Mm. And you filter through. For example, like uh, this uh, early this month, I had a small group of uh, email subscribers and normally I do my so-called my, my filtering or health email health check, for example, every 60 days, no, every six months. Um, the last few weeks, I actually went aggressive in the sense that um, if you do not engage with my emails, that means you don't open or click over a period of 14 days. Mm -hmm. I would then put you a different bucket where I maybe send you less emails instead of daily. Oh, right. Uh, and then you can actually do that. You can do 14, 20, uh, 14, 21 days, 30 days, or even 60 days. And you, you, once, you, once the moment you know that, you can then basically uh, so-called uh, tune the how, the, how, how the frequency of sending emails to them. Those who are constantly open between 7 to 14 days, you can send them daily. Mm, Those who yes. open less than 30 days, you might send them once a week, you know, send them a summary, for example. So that's okay. how you do it. Yeah. Understand. All right. So yeah, Alfred, I uh, hope this answers your question. Um, and then we have another one interesting here. Um, hi, I run a travel agency. Uh, I wait for tourism to open to send them emails or I send them now even though it's not open. So if I send, what type of contents should I send? Okay. I would suggest you send them now. Your relationship has to be maintained in any business is for maintaining a relationship. So same thing with email. What you could do is you can basically... Uh, there's one trick I, I, I think I mentioned in one of our shows previously. For example, now, you know, everybody is dying to travel. Okay. We're all stuck at home. We're kind of bored and all things. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you, you know, uh, take them to, to uh, the, in copywriting, there's always this term that says, you know, uh, you speak, you, you get into uh, the minds of your readers, you know, the problems that is happening, the conversation that's happening in their head, for example. So now, you know, everybody thinks, daydreaming of a nice holiday and all things. So you send a couple of emails and say, hey, if MTO is over tomorrow, or mm -hmm. end of this month, you know, in August, what are the destinations that you like to go? So you give them three choices. Asia, Europe, Americas, for example, right? And uh, they will naturally, if they want, they will click. So by virtue of them clicking, you now bucket them into, okay, this group of people are interested in Asia travel. This group of people are interested in Europe. You will then test by further by sending a few more emails, on, let's say on Europe. Now, within Europe, there are multiple countries, right? So you can send information and say, you know, if you're in Europe, which are the first country that you want to visit first? Now, what you're doing is this. One, are, you're keeping yourself in the light in, in the... In, a, in front of your prospects or your customers. Number two is you're now gathering data so that if MCO is actually over and all those things, your promotional emails will be hyper-targeted. Like what we say, we are suggested to, uh, to Alfred. So now I know how many people is in trade Asia. So if I initial package, I know who to send to. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay. Mm, okay, all right. Uh... Okay, Jimmy, uh, who answers your question? Okay, Alfred yeah. says thanks uh, for the for the questions, uh, for the answer. Um, 
And Jimmy, when you say, um, yeah, MailChimp get into spam and then which email uh, doesn't go into spam, um, mm. I think just now we, we, we answered that already. Yeah. So if you want, you can re-watch back uh, the live later on uh, because we have a few questions and we don't want to um, spend too much time on repeating. Uh, mm. But basically, in, uh, in a nutshell, what it means is that just every, every service doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you like their uh, what do you call this their 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 interface and the price, then it's is enough already. Um, yeah. Essentially, there's not much difference between delivery abilities between Mailchimp, Active Campaign, and uh, other stuff. Otherwise, you'll be run out of business if you cannot deliver your emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, the business. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So yeah, let's go into this. Um. How they get emails for uh ideas for for email content? So your your A B C just now, I think this would be the last one. The C content, mm. correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, for me, for example, when I I look at ideas, I look at for example, um, you know, other sources that's available. Okay, first thing first, it's important, and this is from personal experience, is you need to understand which niche you're in. Very, very specific niche that you're in because you're going to write on that. Okay. So, for example, like, like, uh, like Lucky, for example, if it's in tourism, that's his niche. But which sort of tourism is it? You know, is it business tourism, mice, or casual or leisure? So, if you get deeper into it, number one is you now narrow down on the kind of emails that you send. And because the readers want to know that if I receive an email from Lucky, it's going to be related to travel and nothing else. Okay, that's number one. Number two is this. Once you're in there, your content can be sourced from forums, can be sourced uh, from even Twitters, can be sourced from people who are in the groups, like Facebook group, for example. You know, like in, in my case, I get ideas from people who ask questions on, on Facebook group, either the business side or maybe the email community, for example, and say, you know, I have this problem. Like now I've got so many questions, right, that we have addressed. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. are my those are my ideas that I can use for my email. Uh, because see. your emails can use to answer questions because it's not lucky as uh, asking this question. I'm sure there are a few more other people asking the same question or the Correct. same question that Alfred is asking. So mm. those are my ideas from it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense because the. Rather than thinking, oh, oh, what, what should I send to people? What should I send to people? It's better Ask the for... market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's what they're asking. Really. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, so Jackie asked, like, uh, hi, my, my company doesn't collect customer emails when they register for a program last time. How mm. to start collecting email just now? Mm. How do you start collecting emails? Do you have your phone numbers? Uh, so yeah, Jackie, do you have their all? Oh, we we are focused on mobile numbers. So yeah, they have phone numbers. Correct. Okay, cool. So if you have phone numbers, then let's say now you want to start a you want to start an uh, email subscription. You want to start basically sending emails to them. You use your phone numbers to basically say, hey, uh, we've got some cool stuff coming up, and we're gonna send some stuff to emails. Can we have your email address? Mm -hmm. Collect the email address and you send them from there provide them value la. like i'm going to give you value so you have to give of me course. you have to give me your address for me to give you that value if not you cannot get that value in life it's all about exchange right? uh -huh. Correct. very clear you know uh is you provide value in exchange for their email and they know they're giving you their email in exchange because they wanted something from you anyways right so it's either exchange email or exchange you know dollar and cents because you know when you go for a course and other things so yes provide value and give them something they want you know and uh, by understanding your niche understanding your, the needs of your prospects you'll be able to then get the emails and then build that relationship remember email is not about blasting it's about building relationship when you start on that right footing uh, it solves a lot of problem with deliverability it solves a lot of problem with spam it solves a lot of problem in uh, basic it helps you in growing your sales mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. You can use social media as well. You know, you do a post if you have a lot of fans in your social media, uh, Facebook or whatever platforms you have. Mm -hmm. Do a do a ask to give 
give uh, basically give them something on your social media and then ask them to provide an email address in exchange because you have to deliver by emails. Good, good. Yeah. So if you have if you have a Facebook group, then yeah. just ask everyone within that Facebook group, Or if you have, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, Jackie says value exchange. Thanks. Um. Okay. Alfred has another question. So emails should create some links inside to have interaction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Your you're, you're gonna spend some time writing these emails, and the reason why you write these emails is you want some form of interaction or call to action, anyways. So the links itself, are they a link to your website, link to your YouTube videos, link to your Facebook group, for example. Like for example, I have a Facebook group. Uh, and my, my so-called value exchange is I provide, let's say, free training on email marketing. I provide some uh, constant updates on, uh, on email marketing, for example. And you're invited to join my Facebook group. Now, when you join my Facebook group, inside the three questions, I will ask you for my email address, uh, for yeah. your email address. Mm -hmm. And that's where I can collect. Uh, I'm using Facebook as called well as my link magnet to collect email address. Mm -hmm. okay. So there are multiple forms. So uh, in your first case, um, when you when you when you click, it also shows basically the users. See, eventually, if you don't provide links, and and you constantly just send email, which is a one way communication, right? Your training. Remember, we started all this conversation. We we're training your users for them to click. One day, if you want them to click something, they won't know. They are not used to it. Mm. Okay, so make a point that every time you send an email, there's a there's a link for them to click. Do something. It may not be selling. Mm -hmm. It basically to do to go somewhere or get some resource forever and, and all those things. Oh, um, but I've I've seen emails where where they don't provide links. Um, is because there was like a, I think there was some strategy where you just send email and give Ooh. value without asking Ooh. them to click on anything. Are those mm. good ideas to do? If you don't click, okay, for now until September, before uh, Apple introduces the iOS 15, oh, okay, mm -hmm. which is uh, by September when iOS 15 comes out, Apple has this mail privacy protection. Generally, what it does is this. Long story short, by once this is in place and your majority of your users reads your email on uh, Apple iOS or Apple Mail, you will not know whether they open your emails or not. Yeah, correct. Okay. The only way you know is whether they click your email. So you want that click. You want to start building now uh, all your links inside for them to basically start clicking, and you can then segment them. Remember, by doing this, I can segment them by action, and then I can attribute a profile of the users or your readers. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the the new Apple that's come the the updates is coming out that it, yeah. it basically, uh, it screws up a lot of things, a lot of tracking, a lot of uh, even ads is going to have a, a lot of problems. <laughs> so, ads already started for iOS fourteen by point five. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. Fifteen why. is going to be the uh, the email marketing marketing world that's going to be affected. But I think oh, on, no. the, on the high yeah. side, I think I welcome that because, uh, it forces us as human marketers to be really really genuine with the emails that we send it kicks a lot of spammers out of the picture mm -hmm. mm. Right? because it forces us to really work our content such a way that it gets engagement. So the quality of emails that comes out after that, I expect it's going it to be, be better. Fun. Yeah. Oh, it's going to oh. be fun. Interesting. Okay. There's a nice perspective to it. Oh, yeah. yeah, then you, yeah, I, then I want, want to see what kind of good content that, that we can get, uh, um, after this or so. Yep. So um I think okay, so yeah, um so what's the best or fastest method that we can build an email list that you know can can sell or, or can can convert into somebody? Is there such a a, a method like like well wow, this high engaging email list? Right. Okay. <laughs> high engaging email list means you have an excellent relationship with your readers. How do you build an excellent excellent relationship with your readers? When you provide content? When you sell stuff that is relevant to them, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, and and basically, uh, you 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 provide content, you sell stuff, and basically you they they look forward to reading your emails because your content is really really cool, mm -hmm. right? So either you entertain, or you educate, or you inform, 
Uh, those are the those are the, the copywriting part of the email aspects of it. Okay. Ah, okay. Now, in marketing, we all heard about the top of funnel, middle of funnel, and then the bottom of the funnel. Yes. Okay. So, in order to get quality subscribers in, that's why the teaching part is very important because the moment you know your niche, you know who your customers that you want to talk to, your ideal prospects, it starts with the top of funnel where, let's say, when you do a link magnet. Okay. For example, in my case, I've got a link manager that I provide, let's say, of a free uh, five days video training on email marketing. That's my link manager. Now, I'm talking to people who are interested in email marketing. Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants Facebook ain't going to come into to that particular link manager. So now, yeah. I filter first by providing a link manager that's relevant to them. Right? So, for example, you know, build a link manager for finance for your 100x. Your link manner for 100x finance is different from link manner for sales and marketing because you have right. different segment of users. Yep. Right? So when you start filtering from your link manner onwards down, you then have a higher level of subscribers who are more engaged because they are interested in the content or the subject matter that you're, you are basically writing about. So that goes into the top funnel. The middle of the funnel is where you your content itself, when you provide links, when you provide resources, is where you have engagement. You use the middle of the funnel to build a know, like, and trust. Because they re, the moment they receive an email from Ben, they will know that, oh yeah, he's gonna give me he's gonna give me value. I've got to learn something from him. I'm very interested to look out for his emails. All right. And then at the bottom of the funnel is where you do conversion because once you have segmented them based on exactly their interests and all, you're gonna send them promotional emails that is relevant to them that they want because you you for example now we give you an idea of email and you say hey interesting it makes sense i want to go deeper you can start with middle of funnel which is content that we talk about and eventually you know that i want to take to the next step that's where you do a paid training for example in those things so that's how you go when you build your email list that converts start from the top knowing basically what your niche are and who the prospect that you want and you build backwards and you use that as your link manner. Make sense? Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. understand. Uh, wait, uh, um, if it's like, uh, let's say for example, yeah. Um, so like for example, for, for 100x uh, email subscribers, uh, we, we separate them into different segments already. Mm -hmm. uh, but there might be a slight chance that people who are interested in fitness and, and health actually also like email mar uh, marketing one. So, but we cannot send them so much uh, uh, marketing emails. Mm. But there is a chance that they might convert. <laughs> There's always a chance somebody may convert. But uh -huh. the, prob the thing is, that's why when you... When you start sending emails regularly, you will be able to have enough data to decide. For example, let's say, hey, the people who appear in health and fitness, uh, okay, it's also interested in sales and marketing. Like it's the same group of people, plus or minus. And their, 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 their engagement is pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. So now, when you have a sales and marketing, let's say, event or sales and marketing uh, promotion, you send to this group, these two groups. Uh... And chances are, if they are equal, you don't even bother about the fitness because they are already inside the, the health and fitness. Uh, the oh, they already there. Oh, anyways. okay, okay. This is right. why there's the segmentation. The segmentation, yes. This is where the segmentation uh, is very important. And it takes time to build. It's not like uh, one, two emails. That's why what I do is when I send my daily emails, it allows me to form a better picture of my subscribers. I and, see. And that's where the B part where you deliberately send emails in order to so-called encourage interaction with them to understand their interests. Got it. Okay, yeah. good. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay, Lucky Jimmy has asked again. Uh, I saw I sell Bhutan and Nepal uh, destinations. So should mm. I send them regular info about Bhutan and Nepal once a month or links? Or oh, okay. So should I just send them emails about okay this 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 in, in terms of value or should i just link them to the to the website okay so how often you write your blogs every day every week or every month so if you have a blog every month you just send them once a month to 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 uh to talk about it or you can say you know out of maybe once a week 
one week talks about the blog, the other two weeks talk about new updates on, on travel in Bhutan and also, uh, what's the other country? Nepal, is it? Nepal and Bhutan. Okay, so Jimmy says once a week. So you send engagement once a week. You say, hi, hi, I've got this new blog coming out. It talks about this, this, this. Here's the link, check it out. It doesn't have to be a long email. Sometimes, you know, I, I've done, you know, the nine word email thingy. Sometimes I do a pretty long one. So you, you interchange, but generally, if you have a blog once a week, use your email to spread out, to distribute your content. Your email is also a good way to distribute content. Oh, so like it's not always now, spam ideas. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, it, it doesn't. Because like now I have this uh, this event with you. I've sent to my list twice already, one in uh, two o'clock and the other one, let's say I'm going live in 15 minutes. If you're oh, interested wow. in talking about emails, check it out. Here's the link, you know. So you can use that. Mm. Now see, that's I value. See. You don't have to sell. That's value. That, that's, uh, you're, you're sharing, getting them involved in what you do. Understand. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Jimmy says thanks a lot. Um, okay. Jackie asks, like, yeah, um, I get emails, I get ideas from Facebook group and forum, but need to find people to write content consistently. <laughs> ways to solve. <laughs> we, we were just having this uh, in a backstage. Uh, you, well, if you can afford the budget, you can get somebody to write for you. Uh, if not, it, it is not that difficult to write email. I mean, you write, you know, like we, we started this conversation where we say people take emails for granted because they've been responding and sending emails, right? It's the same thing. You don't have to be a super duper email copywriter to read. You write if you're writing to a friend. Uh -huh. Just, right. It's like you're telling your friend, hey, I found something good that you check this out. Like, like yes. Wow, Correct. yeah, some, something uh, informal is also okay. Like, it's not necessary. Emails has to be very formal, have to very... Uh, no, email <laughs> does not have to be formal. I mean, if you're writing a, on behalf of company, mm. I, I was thinking about it, you know, before we go on the show. If, let's say, if I'm writing on behalf of a company and I have to be formal, right? a lot of people think if I write an email on behalf of what is it formal, now, let me ask you one thing. When you meet up with people in a business networking event, uh, the way you speak, are you speaking formally or are you speaking as if? Uh, would you like me to speak to you formally or would you like to speak to you like as if now where we can sort of build that bond? Which yeah, I would prefer? prefer something more casual, more fun. Then, then at least the conversation is interesting and you're not just like, oh, this person is very boring, only how, know how to talk business. Things like that. <laughs> so why would your email be any different? Mm -hmm. Why would your email be any different? Right? So you write this way, and then you don't have to be perfectly 100% English perfect because what you learn in school, and now I'm sure all of us will realize what we learn in school sometimes may not apply in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, people want to receive email because it's, it's personal to them. Okay, mm -hmm. you're sending directly to their inbox and you're addressing them. Okay, but it's personalized email, right? Um, people want to read emails, which is uh, they know that it's coming from a real person writing it. So, your email, you don't have to worry about it. You just say, you know, depending on what you have, I say, I heard from this Facebook group, you know, I've got this. I, we did a campaign uh, recently where we actually start our subject lines with both a combination of Bahasa and English. Oh. oh, okay. How did they do? They were awesome. <laughs> because the audience is, uh, the audience makeup was like 80% Malay and 20% not Malay. Uh -huh. But we did a mixture and the open rate was awesome. Mm. And you don't have to, and sometimes I start an email with, you know, sometimes it's lowercase all the way. Just think of writing to a friend you just blast the email, send, send, send like that only, but you don't, you, you, you don't, no, there's no structure, whatever. Is it? Yeah, reminds me, uh, uh, I actually sent another email, like uh, I think a week ago, like, something like that. Uh, yeah. Then I put in like super a lot of like exclamation mark. <laughs> then that, that specific email's open rate suddenly like, wow, suddenly so high on that email rate. <laughs> yes. But you have to be careful with exclamation mark because it uh. could also trigger the spam filter as well. Ah, okay. Right. okay. Remember that. So emojis is cool. Uh, lowercase is cool, 
And don't worry about wrong spelling, people are happy because normally you see, the thing is this, you realize uh, you don't really read your emails because uh, what 70, 80% of people are what, uh, reading your emails on a mobile device. You know mm -hmm. what happens? Because of social media, people don't read, they are scanning your emails. Oh, okay. Okay. Scanning. So you have, your whole sentence may not be perfectly, you know, spelling may be there. It's okay because they just scan, they just see what it is because you're scrolling. People are used mm -hmm. to scrolling on the phone already. So your spacing is important. You know, your, uh, I use, I, I, my method is I write one sentence per paragraph. So I have a space for everyone. So that when I scroll, it's easier for me. One okay. sentence. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah sorry, no, no wonder I receive a lot of emails like from those marketing gurus and things like that. They, mm -hmm. they, they, yeah, one sentence and then they skip one sentence and then they skip. Yes. Um, I will, I was thinking like maybe it's readability easier to read, no? Yes, obviously, because you're scanning. I see. So that's the psychology behind yeah. it. Uh, that's okay. The psychology behind uh, it. Uh, so uh, KF uh, asks, uh, he's actually one of our guests, uh, our hosts here, but why are you in comments? Why are you not up here? Can, <laughs> can fight? Hey. <laughs> hey, thanks for supporting us, man. <laughs> yeah, so he asked, uh, what is a good open rate? What is, is there a, a specific standard? Like, okay, this no. if you don't have this open rate, then it's not good. Right. No. Different industries have different open rates. Oh, uh, okay. If you do a search for on Google, uh, and I think that one is basically US, US data, uh, different, in, different, different open rates. Minimum, you should hit at least about, you know, 10, 15% at best. Like I say, certain, certain people with, have, especially with smaller leads, uh, and you, you really, really build that, that bond with your readers. You can hit 70, 80% open rates only. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it takes a lot of work because you really have to build that. But I mean, same thing. Now that I know Ben, and when Ben sends me an email, you know, or 100X sends me an email, I would open it. Mm -hmm. Because right. there's a there's a connect personal connection already. Uh, personal you know connection. who they are already. Okay, correct. Uh, so that's why in 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 marketing, you know, email is not end all be all. Okay, let's be very clear about this. In marketing, it's what three hundred sixty degrees marketing. That means you're present in social, you're present in email, you're present <laughs> whatever platform. That means you're in multiple touch points. Mm. So if I if I see Ben on LinkedIn, which I am, and I see on Facebook, and I see him on YouTube. You know, and now I say, hey, this guy, uh, interesting, uh, talk sense, uh, I, I cannot follow him and it makes sense for me. And when I receive email from him, then I will open it. Mm, right? I see, I see. Yeah. So email okay. is a good way for retention. It's a good way to, on top of, you don't just say, I do email, I don't do anything else. Uh. It doesn't work that way. You can do, you can have all, but emails allows you now to establish a one-to-one. -one. And what you write and how you write it, is the one that's going to, going to determine how you can deepen that relationship with your prospects or your, even your customers. All right. Oh, you have someone here who says, solid advice, Andrew. Hey, Sifu, Sifu, my LinkedIn oh, Sifu. Uh, oh, your LinkedIn Sifu. Oh, yeah. Okay, I have to invite this guy for, for LinkedIn uh, session already. Yeah, you should. He's good. He's good. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Uh, so, yeah, Angel, Angel asks, is there tools or ways to personalize the email? Um, I think this one, every email uh, e service provider would have this uh, 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 feature to it. Lah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's somewhere you just have to pick around when you're creating the emails. Uh, I think it's called merge tags, correct? Yes. Uh, so, yep, you want to look for some merge tags uh, when you're creating the email. Uh, um, usually, every service will have one, so don't have to worry about it. Okay, uh, okay, guys, we are running out of time. Wow, um, I, I think, yeah, man. <laughs> I thought this session is just going to be short, but wow, look at the, all, all the response from you guys. But really, thanks, you guys, for yeah, all thanks, the, the so interesting much. engagement in the comments. Uh, I think we do we have time to take one last question. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so do you think Facebook ads and regular posting in Facebook are the way to convert tourists to as uh, okay, this one is more of a marketing uh, question already. Mm. Uh, do you think Facebook ads and regular posting on Facebook is the right way to convert to exclusive? I think uh, this one, uh, what Andrew mentioned just now, uh, Facebook ads or emails 
and everything is not a final destination uh, for your prospects or leads already. Uh, you have to go at them every part, every kind of social media that, that is possible, every kind of ways to reach them. Uh, uh, Facebook posts, Facebook ads. Uh, if you have a YouTube, spam there too. If you have a blog, do it there too. Um, if you have a, a if, yeah, if you have email, then you just yeah, send them, send them uh, things. So keep on telling them, hey, Bhutan is, Bhutan is nice. Hey, Nepal is nice. Hey, Bhutan is nice. Hey, Nepal is nice. Eventually, you will brainwash a few of them to, 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 to come with you on your, on your trip. All right. Yeah. Um, so, Jimmy, the, the, the end point is this. You, what you want to achieve is when somebody thinks of Bhutan and Nepal, they will think about Lucky Jimmy. Ah, uh, right. Maybe you want to change your name to Nepal Jimmy or Bhutan Jimmy. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Lucky Jimmy. But you, if you say, this is my end point. I want to, when people think of Bhutan or Nepal, I will think of Lucky Jimmy. Now you work backwards, right? You start with the end in mind, you work backwards now. My social media, how do I associate Bhutan and Nepal with Lucky Jimmy? What sort of content do I provide? Then you have this global. So social media is a good way to get the word out. Okay, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's your typical broadcast mechanism now. It's your TV, it's your video and all six, it's your radio and all the stuff. And then if they want to know more, then they will either subscribe to your email. Now that's where you establish yourself because now you have narrowed down your funnel. You establish yourself as an expert in Bhutan and Nepal. That means anything uh, you want to know about Bhutan and Nepal, you better talk to this guy. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. But you know you can't do that on social because it's you just broadcast it so people get people's attention. You see, so that's the attract part. Your email is the natural part to build a know, like, and trust. To the point, they say, "Wow, his email, his content uh, tells me a lot. I've learned so much of Bhutan. I never, I, I never thought of and all those things. When it's time for me to to uh, get a package, I will find this guy. And because you send them email regularly, it's easy. Hey, remember this guy? Our lucky guy or Jimmy guy? Yeah, let me check his email. You see, lucky Jimmy there." There you go. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, Andrew, do you want to do a workshop for our 100X members? Like a special workshop that uh, everyone just come and learn from you. Uh, are you interested in doing that? <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's great to, to share. Uh, and I think uh, it's also a good way to, to, to help the entrepreneurs. Yeah, you know, it, it's fun. Yeah, we can talk about it. Sure. We'll okay, it. nice. Yeah. Um, so uh, for the record, uh, Alfred is actually our CEO of the, the RX. Uh, so... Hey, hey, hey. Alfred, <laughs> Alfred. hey, by the way, I'm, uh, I'll be speaking on uh, this CDEC, uh, you know, this e-commerce oh, event. CDEC uh -huh. is doing something. I think my, my slot is on the 14th. Uh, oh, you okay. check CDEC Facebook. Uh, that's on e-commerce, you know. Um, it's IDEC. SIDEC, ah, Selangor okay. Information Development, whatever, Digital uh, Council and all those things. Okay. Yeah. So if you want, you can check that out. But yeah, we, we can talk about it, how to do a workshop for you guys. I'm fine. If you, if you want to narrow down to specifics, better still, because I don't want to waste your time. And I'll mm. make sure that I deliver value to you guys. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Right. Um, yep. If you want to to uh, talk to or rather learn more from Andrew uh, or have him do your stuff, uh, maybe by the time we, we finish discussing what, what that workshop will be, then uh, we'll release it to you guys. So to get updates, sign up to our email, all right? <laughs> so yeah, go to our, our website at 100xconnects.com and then uh, uh, yeah, we will update you when, when Andrew's workshop is up. And when we have discussed all the specifics, okay, right. So we have a lot of uh, interested here. So Jackie Lang says, I registered. Um, yeah, <laughs> Lucky Jimmy says, I'd like to join. So yeah, um, awesome, so man. thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, uh, let's speak again soon. Yep, it's my uh, pleasure to be, to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming in.